Welcome back. To recap, note the following two landmarks. The DJ junction or duodenal jejunal junction to the left of the spine at the level of the duodenal bulb and the cecum at the right lower quadrant. If we connect the DJJ and the cecum, we can see it forms a long red line. We call this the mesenteric base. This base is the attachment of the mesentery for the jejunum and ilium. Notice that the plastic here will represent the small bowel mesentery. It will attach to a wide base represented by the red ribbon. Now let us look at malrotated bowels. When we say malrotation, it actually refers to two parts. Small bowel part and a large bowel part. Now let's connect the DJJ and the cecum in these two cases. First, in a normally rotated bowel. Here is the DJJ, cecum, and we connect the two. What about here on the right? DJJ, cecum, and here's that line. The red lines would represent the mesenteric base. In which case is the mesenteric base wide? It's here in the normally rotated bowel. Now, in which case is the mesenteric base narrow? It's here in the malrotated bowels. Let's put plastic now to represent the small bowel mesentery attaching to that narrow mesenteric base. Here you go. Now, what do you notice when there is a narrow mesenteric base? If the mesenteric base is narrow, the mesentery can easily twist upon itself or undergo volvulus. Here is an analogy, the small bowel mesentery twisting about the SMA because the base is narrow. That's the twisting. Okay. In here, we see that the proximal portion of the drawstring bag would represent your narrow mesenteric base this one represents the small bowel mesentery. The axis of rotation would be here, to your SMA. So now we understand why mild rotation would predispose to mid-gut volvulus. It's actually because of the narrow mesenteric base, which is prone to twisting. Twisting again. There. Now, what are LADS bands? In malrotated bowels, the peritoneal attachment of the cecum will do its job in attaching it to the posterior abdominal wall. So here is a malrotated, here are malrotated bowels. Let's look for the cecum here. Now imagine that there will be peritoneal tissue which will try to attach the cecum to the posterior abdominal wall. Here you are. There's that peritoneal tissue. Here's a closer look at that peritoneal tissue. Imagine how these peritoneal bands can obstruct the small bowel, and in this case, the second portion of the duodenum. These peritoneal bands are called LADS bands. This is why for mid-gut valvulus surgery, there is LADS procedure, which will lyse these LADS bands. Now, can we see these LADS bands on CT? Well, usually they are not directly visualized. What we'll see are the signs for malrotation and volvulus. In this example, the LADS bands are not seen, but we can see the small bowel obstruction. So in summary, we learned that um, if there is a narrow mesenteric base in malrotation, it's going to be prone to twisting. We also learned why there is a LADS procedure for surgery in mid-gut volvulus.